Hello and welcome to Whiskey Tangent Podcast, Whiskey Madness 2024, The Road to the Final Pour, a five-week-long blind tasting tournament featuring 18 whiskeys. From around the world, I'm Scott, and joining me as always is Ed. Hello, everybody. And once again, Gabe, expertly handling whiskey pouring and tie-breaking duties and being a little bitch and never agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're back inside the scintillating Whiskey Tangent Arena. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm going to do it anyway. It's not your time. <laughs> oh, you didn't get to say hi. Okay, that's fine. Where in round two, we saw only one tie and no upsets the first time in Whiskey Madness tournament history. But here in round three, we'll be determining the winners of each proofing bracket, who will then go on to compete in next week's final pour showdown. And as he does, Ed's here to run down the eight whiskeys who have fought their way through the first two rounds to be here contending today to make their Whiskey Madness wishes come true. Thank you, Scott. And we're going to take you through the four brackets. In the 80-proof bracket, the final will be Kinsey Cabernet Cast Finish, 100% corn. Proof is 86. It's 10 years? Yeah. That's right. From New Liberty Distilleries. Yeah, it's crazy. It beat the benchmark top floor in round one. And it goes against the Kings Creek Tennessee Whiskey, which is not 10 years. <laughs> we don't know the match field because no one cares. Proof is 80. <laughs> about three to four years. It upset Basil Hayden Toast, which shocked everybody, including us. Yeah. And so it is the four seed going against the number two Kinsey. So the 80 proof was full of upsets. The 90 proof bracket, you have the Weller 12-year bourbon going against the Elmer T. Lee, number one versus number two. The Weller is 70% corn, 16% wheat, 14% malted barley. It's 90 proof. It's 12 years old, of course. And it beat the Cairo rye malt from Finland in round two. And the Elmer T. Lee, also from the same company, the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It is the Buffalo Trace Mashable number two, which we estimate is 15% rye. The proof is 90, ages nine years. It beat the Koval single barrel four grain whiskey in round two. Mm. That's a pretty tough matchup, and we're looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. And then in the 100 proof bracket, we have the Ever Dangerous Remus Repeal Reserve Series 7 and the Top Seed. The overall match bill of their bourbon blend is a 68% corn, 20% rye, 4% malted barley. Proof's 100. It's around 9.8 years old. It beat the Blue Note Crossroads in an overtime victory in round two. And it's going against the Four Roses Single Barrel, 60% corn, 35% rye, 5% malted barley. Again, 100 proof. Age about seven years. Beat the Jack Daniels Triple Mash in round two. Mm. And then in the upper proof, the 110 proof bracket, we have the iconic Old Carter Batch 11 Rye, 95% rye, 5% malted barley, a blend of seven different barrels, a proof at 115.6 with an age of around seven years. It beat the Sagamore Spirit Select Rye in round one, and it's going to go against a very game barrel Ambarana Cast Bourbon, 75% corn, 20% rye, 4% malted barley, 116.42 proof, age around five to 10 years. This beat the barrel Seagrass to get into the round, and then it upset the Maker Smart Small Batch Select in round one. It's in the finals against the old Carter, and that one should be really interesting because Barrel always comes to play, Scott. Yeah, what's interesting to me is, and maybe this is the first time this has happened in the bracket finals, where we only have one fourth seed. Usually yeah. we have a couple upsets, and if there's a couple fourth seeds, one year, I think it was like all four seeds, we've made it to this yeah, round. Yeah, that's weird. So, right, so we have the uh, Kings County Tennessee Whiskey as a fourth seed, and we have the Barrel Amberana, which is the third seed. Right, and everyone else is one and two. Everybody else is one and two. Yeah. So for us in this tournament, it's been what you kind of see in the real March Madness. Mm -hmm. The top seeds tend to usually do well. Tends to bubble up with a couple you know, wild cards. A couple glitches. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to start off with the 80 proof. Yeah. Which will be the Kinsey Cabernet Cast Whiskey versus the Kings Creek, Tennessee. Once again, the Kinsey's from New Liberty Distilleries in Philadelphia. And the Kings Creek is a spirit select from Total Wine. They're exclusive to their stores. Right. All right. And so Gabe's going to hand them over. Nice. Now they're pouring me a little bit less. I think they're trying to like gate me here. <laughs> I poured the same amount. They can't stop. Mm, this smells sweet. Ooh. Yeah, A smells nice. Man, A smells really nice. B looks a little darker though. 
Yeah, Ooh. B, B is quite darker on than the. Uh, mm. the Ooh, B mm. smells really nice, mm. like deep caramel graham mm. cracker notes. I think yeah, I know where B this smell, is going yeah, already. Yeah, B smells grapey. Yeah, A smells a little. I don't know. Um, I mean, there's underlying fruit sweetness. Yeah, there. like like dark fruits and some vanilla and mm-hmm. some, and then but a little like youthful smell. The second one smells more complex. Mm. Definitely fruits, dark fruits as well. I mean, they both have similar to that. This also has a little bit more of a, an oak smell to it. Like a char, maybe the bee. For, for the bee, yeah. Oh, nice. Gabe's showing us his carpet. Mm. <laughs> he pulled up his shirt, is what he did. Uh, <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, no, no, just wanted to think he showed us his pleasure trail. Oh uh, my god. Uh, mm. I'm, okay, so just on the nose, I like B better, but yeah. that doesn't really always but, mean. But yet the A nose is pleasant. Sure, it's not off-putting. A is very tasty. Very tasty. A is very drinkable. Now, I believe in this round, you have two whiskeys that are they are both good, but they're both very distinct. Mm. B has a weird flavor, actually. Uh, the, the nose was incredible, but the flavor of B is a little strange. Yeah, I, th- I think that might be playing off the A again. Like, yeah, it might be. So I'm, I'm going to do B, A, I, and then cleanse. Yeah, I'm going to cleanse my palate right yeah. now. A few moments later. Yeah, because once you get A out, B tastes fine now. Yeah. <laughs> False alarm. But I am yeah. tasting more grape on the B now. Oh, my God. Where yes, I wasn't sure. smelling it. Way more fruit on yeah. the B. It's very, very fruity. Yeah. And where does that leading you to think? Well, I, well, I, I have an idea what they are. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I guess the extra fruit flavor would be the, the, the Kinsey. Ca- the Cabernet finish. Yeah. I think that B is lending itself that. Right. right. A is delicious. The only problem I have with A is the finish kind of drops off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. It stops abruptly, like very abruptly. Yeah. It's good, though, but it tastes a little bit thin in comparison to the other one. But it's still flavorful. Mm-hmm. A, then B, and B tastes terrible. But B, then A, B tastes great. Ed has handed over his selection. Mm. Hmm. Scott is pulling out his pink crayon. He's going to make a selection. <laughs> I won't fold it seven times this Thank time. Thank you. All yeah. right. Both choices have been made. I'm I'll, be, right. I'll be surprised if we're not unanimous. To me, yeah. it was pretty clear. Yeah, me also. So, Gabe. <laughs> Kinsey Cabernet Cask. <laughs> mm. All right, nice. Unanimous decision. Yeah. It's a nice little uh, accolade for New Liberties to be moving to the final port. Yeah, and the A taste is just a little bit thin yeah. in the end. The Kinsey is an unknown quantity out there. If you can get some Kinsey, no matter what you can grab, the Zinfandel finish, the Cabernet finish, or even their regular rye bourbon, or if you can get the 15-year that we still have, Scott. Yeah. We have a bottle of Kinsey 15-year, which has some Stitzel Weller juice. Yeah, 30-year-old. 30-year-old Stitzel Weller juice mixed into it. It's something that we will pull out at one time when we need something. We'll do a quick days or something on that. If our ratings ever dip. (laughs) In the Philadelphia area. Or go up. (laughs) (laughs) Right. All right, so... Yeah, and we're going to take a pause and come back with the second one, which is maybe the most iconic pairing of the tournament. Mm. Weller 12-year against the Elmer Teeley. All right, so we are back, and Gabe is pouring the 90-proof bracket finals between the Weller 12-year and the Elmer T. Lee. I know it's not true, but I don't know a time I've been more excited. I'm so excited to taste these two. Yeah. I love them both. They're right in my wheelhouse. It's like Ed's personal favorites. Yeah, they had a pretty easy road to get to here, Yeah, but it's not going to be easy And I have time. to tell you, I always thought that Weller 12 was overhyped because I'd never had it before until we got to uh, we had it. We yeah. had it on the podcast. So yeah. I'm like, holy shit, it's delicious. And I've had the Elmer T. Lee in 10 years, and I thought that was overhyped. And for a lot of people out there, you're listening like, no, Ed, it is overhyped. Maybe it is for you. That's fine. We 
all have our own taste profile. But for me, I like traditional bourbon flavor. And even though that the Weller is a weeded bourbon, it has great flavor. And both of these hit that mark. And I'm really excited because I have no fucking idea who I'd pick. Yeah. I really don't. I think the reason why people say that these are overhyped is because of the price. They're overpriced. Right? It, right. I don't think it's because of the taste. I think everyone agrees that these are really good. But when you can't get Elmer T. Lee and when you see right. it, it's $200. And same with the uh, Weller 12 one, year. One fifty, yeah. Yeah. If all these were sixty dollars or under, that we'd be like, all right, we'll drink. I mean, sure. Relatively speaking, you see Henry McKenna for nine nine dollars. It's no, laughable. yeah, you're dumb. It's fucking yeah, laughable. It's dumb, right, Gabe? Right. Yeah, it's a great bottle, but you know, anyway. And so what I'm saying. <laughs> You're being mean, and I like it. Mean like average, like an average, like like mean, medium, medium and mode. And, yeah, I'm in mean mode, and then medium is like. Well, I've never worn a medium in my life, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a three X. <laughs> All right, game. Weller Twelve Year versus Elmer T. Lee. What do you think? I want an apology. You want an apology for what? I'm for, sorry for Ed, for Ed being Ed to me. Oh, uh, oh okay. For I'll, Ed being Ed to you. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Never mind the fact I'm, that I brought up the kill Ed story. Right. You did. You uh, did. I'll wait. I'm sorry you were born. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh wait, that's not an apology. Not sorry. really. Wait, no. let, me, let me give a millennial apology. I'm sorry that you got upset. <laughs> that, that wasn't heartfelt. Or right, just, just, just give me the fucking whiskey. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're being ridiculous now. All right, a. Oh my god, it's just so simple. It's like there's nothing there. That's what she said to you. <laughs> Shade. Yeah. Got your back. Yeah. Retaliation. Yeah. Shh, nothing's going to ruin my favorite round. <laughs> oh, okay. He has a better nose. A yes, bit. I yeah. agree. He has a little bit more, I don't know, uh, cherry sweetness. Oh, there's oh, shit. They're so similar. The noses are very similar. So if I'm doing noses, B gets the nod. Jesus, they're the same color too. Yeah. There's no way to tell these apart. Because one is a good nose and, and one is slightly less good. And we don't know which one is which. It is so good. We have no idea. Hmm. Maybe for the first time in this tournament, we have absolutely no idea. Are you? Uh, I have no idea. Are you stupefied? Mm. Ooh. There is a difference on the taste though. Who is there? Oh, oh my god A is so smooth It goes right down But the finish Is a little brief Hmm Hmm, hmm. Ooh B has a, a little bit More punch right A the, little bit For being the same proof Right These couldn't be More similar You got a 12 year Versus a 9 year So it's not that Huge of a difference mm -hmm. I'm getting more Like uh, Baking spice notes Off of A B, Off of A really Oh I'm, you're getting Off of B I was getting More like herbaceous And a little bit Of like maybe Tobacco or leather Yeah On, on yeah. B Yeah but baking spices on A, I was saying. B is a little bit more earthier. Earthy. You can't be more earthier. That's too much. I, I thought for sure <laughs> I had it down. Then I went back and I'm completely conflicted again. Hmm. Hmm. B's got a really smooth, sweet finish, but it does have oh, those God. leather, earthy herbaceousness to it. Where A doesn't. A has one of the most delicious palates I've ever had, but the finish is very short. It is shorter. Hmm, that could make a, a decision for you then. Hmm. A is a little fruitier. B does not have quite as good a palate, but the finish is way better. So mm. it's really weird right now. I, I'm it's true. I, I can't make a decision right now. Have, like, we, have we dropped water in these? No, I haven't. No, but I we will. Dropped water. I need. I need more of everything. Because <laughs> I'm going to put water in when you give them back to me. Actually, they're far more different than I thought they're going to be because when I tasted them in the round against other opponents, I thought they were very similar. They're not really similar. They're similar in their components, but not in their flavor profile. Yeah, when we first tasted them, yeah. they did taste similar, but now as we're continuing to drink, the uh, differences are coming out yeah, and dropping some water on it hopefully will accentuate that. Well, let me see. What Otherwise, we're in trouble. Yeah, I don't want to make a pick like any, mini, miny, mo. You know, like yeah. where I'm at right now, they're both really good. A is delicious and smooth. Yes, but maybe its only criticism is it's a little simple because the finish ends quickly. Mm. And with water, by the way, have you put water on A? Mm -hmm. It kind of really washes it. Yeah, out. yeah. B stands up to water a little bit better, I think. They're both delicious, though. Terrific love. whiskeys. I love them both. Yeah, but Ed's got his decision in. <laughs> you drink them both quickly, back to back. <laughs> they taste very similar and very delicious. But I did make my decision. Oh my God, I just took a last sip that I completely doubted myself. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing. But I made my decision. I made my decision, but I have to tell you, I could easily have chosen the other one. Yep. If I did this another five minutes, I might have chosen the other one. It was that close. I know. I had to go with my gut before I talked myself out of it. But now I'm talking <laughs> myself out of it. I feel like I made a mistake. No, they're in. You can't take that back. They're is official. It, is this your final answer? It is. Okay, we have a unanimous. Oh, we shit. do. Oh, we picked the same one. Wow. Yes, you did. Damn. You both picked B. Oh, and B was. We have no idea. No. <laughs> Thank you.
The Weller. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh. And that makes sense because the Elmer Tilly is so nice and drinkable. I would drink it every day of my mm. life for the rest of my life if I had enough of it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I couldn't tell which but one it was. The but- Weller had more complexity. Yeah. Maybe it's the extra three years of aging. Maybe it's the weeded. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Mash bill. Yep. Absolutely. But I have to tell you right now, I'm going to enjoy drinking the loser. I'll tell you that right <laughs> the fuck now. Uh, well, that's really cool. All right. So we're going to take a break again and yeah. set up the 100 proof bracket final between the remus repeal reserve series seven and the four roses single oh barrel. man that is going to be almost as hard as this i imagine it's gonna be epic too all right be right back yeah we're just getting started i know that you want it baby just get on it ready to go we know how to party, pull up the Bacardi, feel it in my body, put on the show. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Nah, we ain't never gonna slow down. Hot a girl sucking hot like a hoe down. Everybody going off in my hometown, ready for a showdown. Keep it on the low now. We about to pop off like a bottle. Everybody knows that we're going full throttle. Drinking alcohol, yeah, straight from the nozzle. End of the night, end up horizontal. Okay, so we're back. Um, it's hard for me to believe that anything could top the 90 proof bracket. It was everything I predicted it to be. But somehow we continue to be entertained and enjoyed. <laughs> Even better whiskeys. Even better Maybe. whiskeys. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I mean, the Elmer T. Lee and the Weller 12 were pretty special bottles. But the 100 proof is featuring, again, the Remus Repeal Reserve Series 7 against the classic Four Roses single barrel. Once again, another one against the two. Mm-hmm. Mash bills are similar. Proof is exactly the same. And so Gabe's poured them, and we're going to uh, start getting the glasses. Yeah. So here comes A. A. Mm. Okay. That smells All right. amazing. It smells nice. Cherries. Immediately, I got off of that. Mm-hmm. And B. Did you just say you got off on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, but I didn't, but you yeah. Got, you got that's the vibe off of that the <laughs> smell the nosing you i got off on it okay no i got cherries off of that it sounded well erotic uh. so i got a much stronger nose on a i don't know what that means yet because they're both the same proof yeah there's more on a b doesn't have much of a nose so, you know you immediately start saying well you know the remus is a blend so da, 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 but that doesn't really mean anything one's 10 year one's seven year they're both relatively close with the remus having a little bit of edge but that's an average remember some of the remus is a lot younger some of it is a lot older mm, yeah i think it has as much as 16 year mm-hmm. in it right mm. I, really I know how much you guys love both of these brands yeah I know Ed, 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 Ed in particular is a big fan of the Remus. I am, but the, each one is different, right? The five was my favorite all yeah, time. Five was excellent. This is not as good as the five. I think we thought the seven was better than the six, Yeah, but the five was definitely better than the seven. Hmm. Swirling B uh, does help it give some extra nosing notes. Wasn't that Ed's rap name in college? Swirling B? <laughs> yeah, one of them. I've had many. I, I think I had two, three dozen rap names. <laughs> At least college. over the course of the podcast, you've had... <laughs> yeah. He would Hundreds come, come out with two turntables dressed up like in a, a B suit, <laughs> wow. buzzing around. I, I would have, literally pay to see that. I, have to I really you, would. Like the old No Rain video from uh, <laughs> what was the group? Oh yeah, uh, Blind and Blind, blind Melon. That's yeah, it. Blind <laughs> All I can say is that maybe <laughs> crickets are suit. sprinting from the green room where they're onto their third pack of Marble Reds for the day. <laughs> Fuck this shit, I'm out of here. Oh, God, I didn't know Scott was going to do falsetto. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) So back to the whiskeys, because I think we probably should talk about them. (laughs) Both of these are amazing. Oh, yeah. It's so hard right now to figure out which is which. Gabe, could you hand us a a, a water? Nope. Uh, Wow. Like a, you want a, a dropper? Yeah, the droppers. Oh, are, the droppers. They? They're in the fridge right yeah, behind sorry, you. Sorry, I didn't get we, those didn't, out. Yeah, we put them away to stay cold between rounds. <laughs> 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 Hashtag production joke. <laughs> is that distilled water or just? Absolutely. It's distilled it's water. Distilled it is. Water. Well, I would keep it cold as well. Yeah, it's distilled water from what we do is we take. Um, Oh, no. 10,000-year-old <laughs> glacier water. And then we get those big snowshoes and we hike up into, like, a glacier and then chisel off just enough that we need for the weekend when we bring it back and then we melt it. 
Well, it's funny because you didn't ask me if you were going to go. I am the goddamn Sherpa. He is the all. Sherpa. Next time. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Next time we'll take Gabe and he'll well, carry you're, everything, you're, no, bitch. Fuck that. <laughs> Ain't well, happening you, now. You've been pretty busy with family stuff, so we didn't want to bother you with, with a trip to the glacier. <laughs> I mean, okay, so the cherry note that I got immediately off of A, I do taste in A, but I also taste it in B. Hmm. Well, that doesn't make it easier at all, does I, it? It's less so, I though. could pick either one easily. I'm already predicting that I will be getting second pours of these because it's too close. I'm going to put two drops. When you say you get cherry off both, I know there's different variations of cherry. Yeah, it's so. It, could you elaborate on the, the cherries from both? And it's kind of a medium grade cherry. It's not like super light, and it's not like a deep dark Luxardo cherry. It's somewhere in the middle of those, but clearly cherry, at least to my palate. I don't think that there can be a wrong answer on these. Ooh, B with the water tastes a lot better. I wouldn't say better. It tastes a lot more expressive than B without the water. A with the water, it did deepen it a bit, but it really deepened B, incredibly so to me. This is so tough. Yeah, I mean, at the 100 proof bracket, I think having the water, I mean, it's not going to dilute it so much that it's going to no. you know, diminish it'll the flavor. Up, it'll hold up to five drops. You're right, Gabe. So uh, having done that, now their noggins are really twisted. <laughs> I, I mean, they're, they're both wow. delicious. I, this is as hard as the previous round. Hmm. I have to tell you, I'm getting close to a decision. Did hmm. you get more? Yeah. And you've already finished more. <laughs> Gabe, look, have, like, I still have my original pour. Have you met Ed? <laughs> yeah. Hey, okay. You doing? You're not unfamiliar with his mannerisms and his gullet and his mythology. They're incredibly close. I, <laughs> Ed's taking Ed some is of, now taking some of Scott's. Is taking some of my B. Apparently two wasn't enough. I mean, I'm getting sugar and baking spices and cherries on both of them. I'm getting a little graham cracker also on both of them. Wow. They're just different balances of those flavors in each one. Ed, the little sip you took from him, did Scott's backwash affect the flavor yeah. at all? I do. I think that's what I'm getting. I'm now getting cherries also. Oh. <laughs> and bile. <sighs> this is a tough decision right yeah, now. It's very tough. It's like a cheap steak. <laughs> this is unprecedented. Ed, I, third need, pour. I need literally just a sip of each. I've never gone back for a third in a tournament tasting. This is the revenge of Ed's liver. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the palate on A might be a little better, but I feel like the finish on B is better, and it's just, I just want to make sure that I'm giving each credit for what they deserve. Did we elaborate on the nose at all on these? Yeah, you know, I don't especially I the, like yeah. the nose on B. I do like the nose on A, but the taste of B, it makes no sense of what it smells like to what I it tastes like. B actually has a weaker nose and a stronger taste. Like, yes. Like it's a more complex taste. Agreed. I think I have a feeling which ones they are, which is why I think B is surprised. Hmm. Oh, my God. But now A's stepping up. Now. Yep. While we're waiting, I'm going to read from the Canterbury Tales. Um, we're on uh, book 11, chapter 4. Is that the one where the guy gets a poker in the anus? <laughs> what the? F the hot poker in the anus. Oh, yeah. Canterbury Tales are naughty. <laughs> yeah, they're dirty. I was an English major. I know. I read them all. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? I was not. I think it's the Miller's Tale. Well, Miller? I don't even know her. I wouldn't even poke her. Everybody... <laughs> Feel free to Google the Miller's Tale from Canterbury Tales. All right. I have made my decision, and I'm going to circle my letter. I'm going to say, and I know I say this all the time, so I have no credibility. This might be the hardest one I've ever had to do. I believe you say that in about 75% yeah. of these matches. <laughs> I, I know. I have no credibility even with myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Gabe, what? was it a unanimous decision? Well, I'm going to open up and let you know. Okay. All right. All right. In, in typical fashion, Ed folded his once. Scott folded his twice. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to take a little more time. <laughs> <laughs> I love the time it took him to say that. He could have unfolded it. <laughs> also, editing. Somebody's drinking. Oh, All no. Right. We picked different ones. Scott I know. picked A. Ed he picked B. And A was the Remus, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Oh, my God. I thought I was picking the Four Roses. <sighs> okay. Ed, did you think you were picking Remus? Wow. No, I thought I was picking Four Roses. Wow. Because I, I thought the nose on the Remus, I smelled all the different blends. That's crazy. But when I tasted them, and I mean, I was close with the Remus, but that finish and the complexity of the Four Roses, it's just in my mouth today that much better. So we'll see what Gabe thinks. Wow. I'm going to switch places, and this is going to be one of, I think, Gabe's most difficult yeah. pinch hits. Overtime. All right, so Ed has poured 
the whiskeys for Gabe, the Remus Repeal Reserve, and the Four Roses Single Barrel. Right. I'm going to send over the A right now, and I've given him a decent pour of each so that... Wow. Nice. Jesus, you know, Christmas Eve. Well, I, you know, I assume he's going to need as much as me, so I just put them all <laughs> in the same glass. So, no. So it's an A and a B. He's nosing them. Hmm. He's very traditional. It's uh, oaky, some nice light caramel. B's not quite as uh, odiferous. It's uh, I not bad, that, yeah. but it's... Uh, the it's, nose started to me- blend together for me. Mm-hmm. They did for me, and then they went apart again yeah. later after I dropped the water in. Yeah, I mean, it, it, B has got a diminished traditional smell, though. It's got some banana on it. I mean, it's nothing off-putting. It smells good, so going in for a taste. Did you crack your glass there? No, no, it's but I, I combined them. <laughs> <laughs> as he does. As I do. I mean, they taste so similar. Oh, well, yeah. Well, this here, is really good. Well, here's actually. what I'm thinking. Yeah. The uh, Remus is $100 a bottle. The Four Roses is 45 <laughs> So if we get like 100 bottles of each and charge $200 for it, we can make 50 bucks a bottle of it. <laughs> the blend. <laughs> the yeah. whiskey tanned underground blend. Yeah. Shipped A, it's good. A slight oakiness. It's got some orange peel to it, some zest. It's traditional. It doesn't have too much of a burn. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's grandfather showed up. <laughs> 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 Uh, what would you call the blend? The Remus Repeal Reserve Roses? The Roses Remus? Oh, yeah. So we can find <laughs> The Remus Roses um, Reserve. Reserve. Batch 7. Reserve. Yeah. Actually, I know what it would be called. It would be called Cease and Desist. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a major lawsuit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, B started out uh, not quite as, as strong, but then it lingered a lot more than A did. Yeah. And it's holding on and it's coming yeah. back real strong and nice. Really good flavor. <laughs> They're both good, right? Yeah. This is going to be a tough call. Yeah, well, that's, really yeah that's why I gave you a lot to play with. Because God didn't. Shade. Shade. <laughs> nice. Ah. I couldn't even get my jab in. You beat me to it. <laughs> so I dropped a little bit of water in there. We're going to cleanse my palate and try them again. Yeah. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, shit. Oh. I hope people know that we've been friends all for like 30, 35 years. It's, yeah, I think you and Gabe is like 35, and I'm 32 I, with him. Gabe and I met in the 80s. That's how, right. how long we've right. known each other. And I met you in the 90s, the early 90s, like what, like 91, something like that? Yeah, yeah, early. Scott, tell everybody where and what we were listening to when we first knew we were going to be friends. Wham. Oh. Wham. No. Menudo. <laughs> 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 no, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin Four. We listened to the entire album. Me, you, Rich, and Mike. Oh, right. so, yeah. oh, Where so was they, it? Oh, so, <laughs> down the shore at Ion. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. so they had pot back then, did they? <laughs> <laughs> this was when albums had sides. And yeah, right. Playing yeah. cassette or whatever we were playing back then. Right, right. And Stairway to Heaven is the last one on the first side. Right. And everyone was with us, and everyone joined in. Right. It was like a big crescendo, and then we did the second half, and everyone disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Except for us four, and then we, we right. looked at each other and were like, oh. "You're going to be a." Friend right. of mine. Did we just become best friends? So wait, did you guys just come in on four sticks with us just before you there? <laughs> <laughs> The water didn't really do much for me. I mean, I, I yeah. felt the same way. I felt like when I got my third sip from you, Gabe, I didn't put any water on it. I just wrote mm-hmm. it out all the way straight. Unlike Scott's college career. <laughs> <laughs> He had to pay for the education somehow, didn't he? <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> that was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> Told you in confidence. Hey, rent comes in all forms. <laughs> so this is all just traction from the fact that Gabe's struggling as much as I was. And I just want to highlight, one is a one-off blend of whiskeys ranging from 16 years old until I think 8 years old or 7 years old or something like that. And one is just a regular Four Roses single bar that you can go to your store and get any single time and is pretty consistent. So if, if anything that's coming out of this is that go down to your local liquor store, pull out two 20s and a five, and get yourself a bottle of Four Roses single barrel. Yeah, there are excellent whiskeys for a decent price. Right. Yes, there are. I'm going with A. A. a, a just, wow, I was not ready for a decision at this point. You know, even though I said yeah. B was a lesser taste right yeah. off the bat, but it lingered, I think A just has more maturity. So, A. And A was. You know, like we said, the Four Roses Single Barrel is a classic. It's special, but it is not going on. Oh, it's the Remus Reserve wow. 7. Wow. Gabe has picked the top seed. So you picked with me for once. Yes. yes. All right, <laughs> I, I, buddy. And, yeah. uh, but once again, if you'd like to get two bottles for the price of one, feel free to get the Four Roses. You want to go sing Let's Up and Four right now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> for all time's sake. All right, sure. we're going to take a 47-minute break and listen to uh, Let's Up and Four. Well, first, we have to go to the store and buy a record player. <laughs> 
and then we have to go to the vinyl store and pay thirty five dollars for an album we all had when we were ten. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but Omar. then we will finally be back with the old Carter Batch 11 Rye, the one seed versus the barrel Ambarana cask bourbon. I said I got this. None of this radio pop shit. I dropped this. Turning back the clock to rock shit. I cop it. So knock, knock. I'm on this. I'm hot bitch. Like a hot bitch. I walk in, I got this, radio drop this Hot shit, just watch this, I fucking promise Told it, do not miss, your chance to cop this Will you capture it, or just let it slip? Oh! Okay, so we're back for the final matchup of the round in the 110 to 119 proof bracket. <laughs> the number one seed, the old Carter Batch 11 Rye, which we've talked about to nauseum in this tournament. Mm-hmm. Going against the third seed, an upstart barrel, Aberano cast bourbon, which everybody in barrel's court thinks they're going to win today. Yeah. I don't think they have any doubt. And this is probably the first underdog that expects to win. Yeah. They're always very confident, maybe overconfident. You know, like the barrel seagrass that got knocked out, they're completely calm and confident because, like, the only whiskey that could knock us out is another barrel. <laughs> so they're like, they went home singing on the way home, you know, listen to the Daz band. <laughs> Let it whip. <laughs> Let it whip. And, uh, back. Yep. Whip, whip, whip. and so the barrel is in here like, let's go. Whip it all night. Because they're like, they're like, <laughs> y'all, y'all like put out like what, 1,600 bottles of this? We put out 60,000 bottles of ours. We're ready to rock and roll. And nothing tastes like Aberano cast finish. And we all know that. Going to be a cinnamon bomb. I don't think it's going to be hard to tell the difference. Mm. But which one's going to be the best in our mouth in Wait, this round? Wait, cinnamon bomb. Wasn't that a new edition? <laughs> Cinnamon Bomb. That was one of my other rap names, I think. You dropped a Cinnamon Bomb on me? (laughs) (laughs) You dropped a bomb on me, baby. I think, wasn't that Neil Young? Neil Young, I'm thinking of Candy Girl. (laughs) Right, right. I'm way off. I'm over here on left field. He's like, I want to drink me a Cinnamon Bomb. (laughs) Barrel whiskey that can be old Carter. It's a Cinnamon Bomb. Oh, my God. Uh, but Old Carter does have some baking spices on yep. it. I mean, it's a they rye, do. and it's delicious. Right. So Way to bring it back in. Com- yeah, thank you. Completely <laughs> different mash bills. Uh, it's partially my fault. I was singing also. It would have been more interesting if the seagrass made through because they both would be ryes, but the Old Carter is a blend of seven different barrels of their 95.55 rye mash bill. Yeah. 115 proof going against a 75% corn mash bill with a pretty high rye, 21% rye. Mm. And it's 116, so they're almost identical. We have a 5 to 10 year in the barrel going against something older than 7 as far as we know. All right. All right, so we're getting the A. Personally, uh, I smell an upset in this round. Mm, interesting, because we've gushed over the old Carter mm. so far through this tournament. This one is not hard to distinguish, as the last two were. A, smells like cinnamon. B, smells right. like a rye. It smells right. dill and herbaceous. I mean, A, tastes like a snickerdoodle. Yeah, Like, absolutely. somebody baked a snickerdoodle and shoved it in my mouth and said, here, eat it. Or somewhere else. Oh. <laughs> here, feel this. I did mention my college days. So. I, um... They're both really good whiskeys, but it's not like the 90 bracket, and it's not like the 100 bracket for me. I already have a decision. Wow. So you really know right now. I know right now what okay. I want. I'm going right. to go back to confirm, Okay. I'm pretty Uh-oh. confident. I have a feeling that I know which one as well, but I am going to put a little water on both of them just to see what it does. I, we have to fill the airtime. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> not really. We could, though. How about some more in, uh, Neil Young? <laughs> no, please, no. I've submitted my answer. Ed has There's no reason to screw around when you have something answer. that's just superior. Hmm. I won't look until I get I, Scott's. I, I mean, Ed, you're not wrong. They're both delicious. Yeah. But Again. one is just unbelievable. It's complex from the beginning it hits your mouth until it finishes and it's still finishing in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> which which you know, normally I'd do with Gabe. But the, uh, oh, my God. Well, you know, we yeah. make it a point not to put terrible whiskeys in this tournament. Right. So by round three, yeah. nothing bad should be in it. Correct. But I, I think you were right with me. I think so. I'd be surprised if you do weren't. You, do you think I have a uh, unanimous decision? I yes. Th- for me, it was special enough that I know Scott well enough. And if it's one I think, then it fits his profile as well. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's not that one, we're both going to fall out of our stool. <laughs> you know? Was it, in fact, unanimous, Gabe? Yes. Yes, it was. It was. We both chose B. 
Yes, you do. B was. B was the... Old Carter, right? Old Carter, yeah. <laughs> really. Because the other one was distinctly cinnamon, distinctly a Bronica cast. But once again, there's something about when the old Carter enters your mouth that just says, I am here. Love me. <laughs> it's incredibly expressive. Oh, there's my God. There's so much flavor. It's like it packs every single whiskey tasting note yep. into one cohesive whole. And it's amazing. I, and I'll be honest with you. I know it seems strange to say this, but I honestly thought the barrel finished rather thin for me. Like, it had a really good punch in the beginning, and then it kind of just, like, stopped. And the old Carter just arrives, mm-hmm. stays, and finishes like a champion. Mm-hmm. And so to me, the old Carter, it's something that just resonates with you. It has blown the doors off anything it's come across. And I know we have some heavy hitters. I know we have the Remus. I know we have the Weller 12. I know we have a really interesting upstart Kinsey Cabernet cast finish, which was very strong flavors. But I have to tell you, I will be stunned if the old Carter does not take this it's going into the final pour. Yeah, the first time we tasted it in round one, we were blown away by it. And I agree, it's really going to be hard to beat in the next final rounds. Gabe? Do you think if the barrel went up against another bottle, it would have been... Uh... The barrel could have beat a lot of whiskeys, but not the old Carter. Hmm. Well, the barrel Ambarana did beat the Maker's Mark small batch in the previous right. round, so it's not like it couldn't beat a premium bourbon because it already did. Oh, no, of course. We know that. We know that's the truth. I just think maybe the uh, distinctiveness of the, the barrel, it's, it's just so different. Well, here's my take on it. It's distinctive. It's delicious. But again, something like the old Carter, the Ambarana finishing is just a little bit too much. It's too expressive. It's too much cinnamon. It's too much baking spice Mm -hmm. where the old Carter is much more integrated. Yeah. Wonderful whiskey. So coming up in the final round that we call the semifinals and the final pour, going up against each other will be the 80 proof bracket winner, Kinsey Cabernet cask. And the 90 proof bracket winner, the Weller 12 year. That should be fascinating. And then the other matchup will be the 100 proof winner, the Remus Repeal Reserve Series 7. Yep. And the 110 proof winner, the Old Carter Batch 11 Rye. And then those winners go against each other for the, the final, final pour. pour. That was, wow, that was right. sexy. <laughs> so tune in next week where we're going to have the semis and the final pour, and we'll find out who wins this tournament. Ed's got a semi. And <laughs> I, I always do when I'm drinking this good of whiskey, Gabe. I can't help it. You know, <laughs> this is what whiskey dick is to me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this was great. All right, that's it. So, All right. Ed, take us out. Once again, another fantastic round as we go through Whiskey Madness. If you've been with us this long, I know you want to come along for next week. So we'll see you next Friday for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I am Gabe. Cheers, everybody. Later. And you're not that great, man. Stop what you're saying. Stop what you're making. Everybody here knows that you just fake it.